Ever got question in mind why Tesla is leader in EVs? There were many automotive giants making EVs earlier. So what made Tesla stand out? The answer is fast charging, superb acceleration, adequate top speed, long range, and a long battery lifespan, all at very competitive price. More or less the core principal technology behind AC motors and batteries is same for most EVs. However, superb optimization of it is the key of Tesla making its car perform above all. Battery pack is the most important component for EVs and Tesla has the best battery technology in the industry, no doubt about that. But then think for a moment, if all the industry more or less uses same lithium ion technology for batteries, the only difference for the most part is using cylindrical cells to make a pack in Tesla. So how with this small change of form factor Tesla is achieving such grades? The secret of the great performance of batteries is not in cells but between the cells, the top of the line thermal management system. And it's part the loop in which fluid is flown to maintain the batteries at optimum temperature is the secret behind Tesla car's performance. Today we are going to break it down in detail. Let's untangle the thermal management system for Teslas, especially the Model 3. Batteries perform best in narrow temperature range of 15 to 35 degrees Celsius. Anything above and below that and the batteries perform poor. So first, let's list down the goals to achieve and how it needs to be achieved. The first goal is batteries should charge quickly. Batteries have electrolyte in it. Its conductivity varies with temperature. Cold batteries have high internal resistance as electrons face difficulty overcoming mutual attractions. In such conditions as the conductivity is less, the charging and discharging rate is very poor. So to quick charge the batteries, optimum temperature must be maintained. If the batteries are cold, then it should be heated up. If it's too hot because of the atmosphere or because being used or due to fast charging, then it should also be cooled because of the second goal, that is long battery lifespan. Batteries when used on high temperature for extended period of time result in lower battery lifespan. So temperature of batteries shouldn't always be warm if it's not needed. Third goal is fast acceleration in ludicrous mode. Batteries should be warm, quite warm to discharge high power as demanded by motor. So priority in ludicrous mode is high discharge rate. So lifespan of the battery is compromised and performance is given priority. Next goal is car should start in cold winters. Here heating means warming up of batteries is required. Next goal is car should be able to reach high speed. Requirement here is warm batteries to discharge high current. So initially heating may be required. However, while being used for long time, batteries can itself get heated. So while driving on high speed for long time, cooling is required to maintain optimum temperature of batteries so that it shouldn't ruin the lifespan of the batteries. Next goal is good driving range. Again. Just optimum temperature should be maintained where batteries have low internal resistance and good conductivity so that not much of the current is wasted in conversion. In all of the above conditions, either heating or cooling is required. So let's see how Tesla does this. The drive unit has inverters and electric motors in it. As electric motors have moving part, hence there can be micrometal particles due to wear. So it is cooled with oil. Then this oil is flown through a heat exchanger where the water and glycol solution absorbs the heat and takes it away. In regular condition, it goes to radiators for cooling, but if the batteries are needed to be heated, then this water and glycol solution is flown through the batteries, means from the loop which is in the batteries. This hot water and glycol solution, which I will just call as water from now, heats the batteries until it reaches required temperature. Now to heat this way, the drive unit should be warm enough. What if it's not? Let's say the car is parked for a long in cold and the temperature of the drive unit isn't sufficient. Then in that case, the motors are stalled, means small current is provided to motors which is not sufficient to spin its shaft. 
So the coils of the motors work as registers and heats the motor up. Then the cooling oil in the drive unit fetches the heat from the motors and then transfers it to the water via heat exchanger. Now this warm water is then circulated to the batteries which warms it to the optimum working temperature. The small current required is drawn from the batteries. In extreme condition when it's too cold and car is parked, it's advised to keep it plugged in so that the current can be drawn from the wall outlet if batteries cannot discharge sufficient current. Now let's see how cooling is done. It is really very interesting. Before we move there, make sure you subscribe the channel and turn on the notifications for such interesting videos in future. Help us grow by sharing the video, leave your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to like. So how is cooling done? In IC engine, cooling is easy. As the engines produce more heat, it also makes more power, which in most cases translate to faster vehicle, considering load isn't varying much. Hence, with faster car, more air flows over the radiators. So there is more cooling. So it can be said that heating of engine and cooling effect from radiator are fairly proportional. There are minor variations due to different factors. However, that is negligible. I mean, that's why simple cooling system with bunch of mechanical components is working for IC engines since decades. Cooling of drive unit and power electronics in EVs is pretty similar to IC engines. More heat generation at more power, which mostly translates to more speed. And more speed means more cooling with good airflow over the radiators. So radiators work for it. But sadly, cooling of batteries is pretty challenging. Considering the worst case scenario, let's say you are on a stop, supercharging your Tesla on a hot summer day. 120 to 250 kilowatts of power rushing into your batteries and batteries are getting hot. In such case, if the radiators are used, it won't help much in cooling as there is no high speed air flowing over it. The more important problem is temperature difference. Batteries shouldn't go over 35 degrees Celsius in order to have good performance as well as good battery lifespan. Radiators can't help much at such low temperatures as on a sunny day if the temperature is above 35 degrees Celsius, then the radiators can't cool the batteries because the external atmospheric temperature is more. So the radiators will actually absorb external heat and put it into the water which is to be circulated in the batteries, which is a big no because we don't want to heat up the batteries. If the atmospheric temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, same as the batteries to be maintained, then again the radiators won't help because there won't be temperature difference between battery cooling water and temperature of atmosphere. So no heat will flow means there won't be any cooling. And let's say if the temperature is below 35 degrees Celsius, let's say 25 degrees Celsius, still the cooling won't be very effective as the temperature difference between the temperature of water and the atmosphere would just be 10 degrees Celsius. So heat transfer rate would also be very slow. Comparing it with the IC engines, IC engines don't face such issue as coolant temperature in running engine is above 90 degrees Celsius. So even on a sunny day with a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, the temperature difference between the coolant and the atmosphere is about 50 degrees Celsius. So the heat transfer rate even in that condition is quite effective. Hence the cooling is also very effective. So how did Tesla solve this problem of cooling batteries even in hot atmospheric temperature? Here's how. The AC system evaporator side means the cooling side is divided in two parts. One goes to the cabin for cooling and other to the heat exchanger where the water can be chilled to very low temperature. Then this water flows through the loop of the batteries. As there is lot more temperature difference in the battery temperature and the chilled water, the water fetches out more heat quickly from the batteries. So cooling of batteries not only become possible in hot atmospheric temperature, but this cooling also becomes very effective. Now a question which many engineers ask me. For AC system to work properly, the condenser side should be able to dissipate heat in atmosphere. Condenser means the radiator like part of AC which throws out heat. Now a radiator if directly connected to batteries cannot function well. So how the condenser of AC is able to dissipate heat quickly and function well in same conditions? Think for a moment. In the meantime, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe the channel, share the video with friends and hit the notification bell for such interesting videos in future. 
The answer for the question is simple. The compressor compresses the refrigerant due to which it also heats up. And then it goes to condenser to dissipate its heat in the atmosphere, then to the expansion valve after which it chills down. The refrigerant used in this cycle is R314A, which is the most common refrigerant used in cars. When it is compressed, it reaches to about 80-85 degrees Celsius. So when it goes in condenser after compression, even on a hot summer day with 40 degrees Celsius of atmospheric temperature, the 85 degrees Celsius refrigerant can effectively transfer heat to atmosphere as the temperature difference between refrigerant in condenser and atmosphere is about 45 degrees Celsius, which is sufficiently high for quick heat dissipation. An indirect type of cooling system. Obviously it consumes some power, however it makes cars usability lot better. Now with all these things to do, you might think it will require complex system. But my friend, it's Tesla. No one can beat them in vertical integration. All this system is controlled with one plastic bottle, one multi-way valve and two pumps. That's all required to manage all conditions. This bottle is called Super Bottle. It also has its own logo on top of it. It has two pumps directly fitted on it and a valve also mounted on it. So let's see the schematic and how it works. First, the cooling cycle. The normal temperature water absorbs the heat from the inverters. Then it further absorbs the heat of motors via the cooling oil. The water till this point becomes quite warm. This warm water then travels down this path where it has two bifurcations, one to the multiway valve and other to the radiator. As in cooling wood, the inlet side of the multiway valve for this line is blocked, hence the water has to take the radiator's path. Here it cools down in radiator, then goes to multiway valve which diverts it back to the drive unit for next cycle. For the cooling of batteries, the expansion valve of refrigerant is turned on. So the refrigerant flows in this chiller means heat exchanger where the refrigerant chills down the water. This water then flows in the loop of batteries and absorb the heat. Then it comes to multiway valve where it diverts back into the chiller. The water chills down again and the cycle continues. Now let's see how the heating cycle works. The cool water absorbs the heat from the inverter. Then it further absorbs the heat of motors via heat exchanger. Till this point the water warms up. Then this warm water travels down this path. Now with the bifurcation it has two paths to go. One to the super bottles multiway valve and second to the radiator. As it's heating mode so the multiway valve is switched this way so that the outside of the radiator is blocked. As water cannot come out from there, so the new water cannot enter in. Hence, the warm water has to go to the multiway valve. This is then diverted to heat exchanger, means chiller. One point to note here is that the expansion valve of refrigerant is closed in heating mode. So there is no cool refrigerant in this side of the heat exchanger. Hence, no cooling of warm water. The warm water remains warm and goes in the loop of batteries where it heats up the cold batteries and the water itself cool downs. Then this water is ready for next cycle where it goes back to the multiway valve from where it is diverted back to the inverters and motors. That's how Tesla's thermal management system works and makes its batteries the best, making its car's performance so good. Thank you for watching.